Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a really fun card tutorial using my brand new stamp set with Gina K called You Being You. And today we are going to make this card. So come on in and let's get started. So here is the inspiration for the card that we're going to make today. We're going to make some changes to the color palette, get a more fall-like color palette, and I'm going to share some background pattern building techniques using some tone-on-tone -tone colors. So we're going to have some fun creating this really fun embroidery hoop art card. So let's start out by talking about the colors that I'm going to be using for today's project. I have Gina K Designs inks here, and I have Craft. I'm using Grass Green and Jelly Bean Green for my two greens. I have Prickly Pear. Love this color for fall. Love it, love it, love it. I have Wild Dandelion, also as another yellow tone color. I have Sandy Beach here because we're going to do a little bit of tone on tone with the Craft ink on the craft cardstock. So these two colors are going to be great for those two browns. I have the amalgam ink here for our sentiment and the black, the obsidian black. And I have two colors here. I have tomato soup, which is a great fall color. And I also have passionate pink, love it. Okay, so moving on to the stamps and dies, we're going to be using my You Being You stamp set, and we're going to be focused on the florals, the two brushstroke florals, the main um, embroidery hoop image, the line art floral, the thanks for being you, and the leaf elements. I also have the companion die set um, that I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks for using this die set with the stamp set. And I have the background stamp called Gauze from Gina K Designs. And we're gonna use that for a technique called stamp kissing to create a little bit of extra texture with the brushstroke florals. I'm super excited to share this with you. Okay, I have a piece of craft cardstock cut to an A2 size card. I also have a piece of Gina K Designs white layering cardstock for our floral and embroidery hoop pieces that we're gonna be creating. I also have my tidy towel and some Gina K Designs Connect glue. I have some of the square pop dots that we're gonna be using just to kind of elevate the embroidery hoop so we can see the texture a little bit more. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the stamp kissing technique. So I have the gauze background stamp and I'm inking it up here with the craft ink. And I'm just kind of going around in a circle here in the center of the background. And I'm just taking my cardstock and layering it on top and just kind of rubbing it a little bit. I got a little schmutz on there, but that's okay. And I've got this reveal here where we can see a little bit of the texture. And I've kind of played with the colors a little bit to really hone in on using the craft because the craft is going to fade back. It might look a little dark right now, but it is going to fade back into the paper. And it's going to give me that subtle background look as I begin to move on to add another layer of texture over top. So now we're gonna use the open line flower and stamp a pattern around the cardstock over top of the texture that we've already created. And I am going back in again with the craft. So I've got this tone on tone look, but because the gauze was such a light, it's such a light texture, when I go back over top of it with the stamped image, you can see because the line weights in the stamped image are a little more intense and darker and a heavier line weight, we're getting a bit more of a darker look and feel of the craft color. So I'm using craft twice, but we get a little bit of a different look each time because the gauze background stamp is really delicate and has some fine lines, but when I add this stamp over top that has a little bit more bold lines, we get 
more of a look of the different textures that are coming through and I'm really digging it. And also it's going to fade back even more. So when we see the card at the end, you're gonna notice that the craft has kind of softened a bit more into the fiber of the craft cardstock. And then it has just, um, we can still see the two textures coming together, but it is not such a strong, bold look that we have right now. But I am digging it, and I love create, letting stamps be the star of the show and creating these two levels of texture. Okay, so now we're going to get into building the elements for the front of the card. So I have Sandy Beach here, and I really love this color, and I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the hoop, the embroidery hoop in Sandy Beach. And it's just going to be a really nice um, tan brown tone that's going to contrast really well with the craft that's already happening on the card base. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up and set that aside as we move on to the floral images. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the two brush stroke floral images. And I'm gonna start with the larger one and I'm gonna ink it up with the tomato soup color. I really like this color for fall, but it has just a slight, it's warm, but it has a slight little pinkish tone to it. So it complements the passionate pink color really, really well. Okay, so I'm going to also pull back in the gauze stamp set. So again, this is tomato soup. I'm inking up that uh, brush stroke floral. And now I'm going to stamp it down onto the gauze background stamp. And then stamp off onto my paper. So what I've done is I've picked up the texture from the gauze stamp set and stamped it down. So I've kissed it onto that stamp, then stamped it down onto my white cardstock to create another level of texture within the stamped image. Now I'm just going to take this piece of cardstock over here and just show you the stamped image. So you could also use this version of the brushstroke floral and in your project and it's got more of the texture but I really just wanted to kiss that texture onto the brush stroke floral and just have a little bit of it kind of making an impression into that larger flower. Okay so I'm going to take the smaller flower now and ink it up with the passionate pink and repeat the same process. So I'm going to stamp it down into the gauze background stamp. Now you can do this technique with any background stamp that you might have in your stash. I just really liked this gauze for fall. And look at that texture. You can start to see the lines in the brushstroke floral. So it just adds another level of dimension to the embellishments that we're going to create. The brushstroke florals have a lot of watercolory look and feel to them, but when you add them to this stamp kissing technique, you get a whole nother level of texture. Love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move on and stamp out the leaf images. And I'm not going to use the stamp kissing technique for this. The leaf images themselves within the stamp have a little bit of distressing and brush stroke look and feel. So you're already going to get that watercolor look and feel just by simply stamping it. So I've got grass green and jelly bean green here so I can get two contrasting greens that complement each other really well so we get a little bit of variation in our color. And I'm just inking them up and stamping them down onto the cardstock here. And I just, I love these two colors. You see them a lot in my videos. They just are just so beautiful together. And love, love, love them. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp them down here so they have a little bit of distance so I can get the dye around them for cutting. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to putting the dies down on top of my stamped image. So I have the hoop die and this, and I just have a little bit of purple tape here and I'm going to adhere temporarily, adhere that down before I put it into my die cutter. But I wanted to talk a little bit about these florals because these florals have some really interesting edges. So it might be hard for you to figure out how to line them up. So this is how I do it. You find the, the arc 
the little um, V shape that's happening over on the right side of the flower and line it up that way. Now you could take the die and you could circle it around until you find it. But if you find those little V shapes that I'm talking about um, in the florals, so at the top florals at the top and the bottom florals over on the right, you can move your die around and find that little V shape in the die and then just place it down and put a little tacky little um, purple tape down and you're good to go. So sometimes it's a little tricky with die cuts and florals because florals have so many curved edges, but this is a little tip and trick you can use to line your dies up. And the leaf dies are a little bit easier, so just gonna go ahead and put some tape down on them just to hold that down. So I can go ahead and run the whole thing through my die cutting machine. I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum 6. I love it. You can see it's very well loved, easy to use, and it works for me every time. Okay, so here are all of our die cut pieces, and they came out so nice. And I just wanted to share, you get this really wonky circle too that comes out of the center that could be useful for another project. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and start to build the card with all of the embellished pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these foam squares and just put the embroidery hoop down and that's going to be my like grounding image and I'm just nesting it in here a little more towards the left where I have that open circle like feel in the pattern that's on the base of the cardstock. So just adding a little bit of the foam squares on all of the embellishments, and I'm going to be nesting the three florals together in the left hand, like lower left hand side of the embroidery hoop. And I wanna keep in mind while I'm putting these on that my sentiment still has to go in the center and I am going rogue with the sentiment. Like really, I should put the sentiment on first, but I ended up putting the florals on first and I'm just kind of nesting that floral so I get that look and feel of it angling down to the left corner here and just taking the other blooms, kind of giving them a quarter turn so that we get a little bit of variation in the way the florals look so they're not all pointing in the same direction. Just kind of nesting them around and just getting a good feel for how that looks and nesting the three together. And you can see that the three florals are angled really towards the left-hand side of that design, but the pattern, the base pattern on the craft cardstock is really occupying quite a bit of the right-hand side of the card. So this is how we're balancing out the design of this card. So we've got some embellished florals on the left, that are popped up and we've got the ground floral on the right. So that really does help ground the whole design and just kind of pull it together. Okay, so I'm pulling the um, thanks for being you sentiment and I'm going to go ahead and ink it up and position it right where you see that V in the floral. So I'm just inking it up here with the amalgam ink because it's a really good, strong ink, and I know that I'm going to be able to stamp that down onto that craft cardstock in one pass. But I did get a little bit of schmutz over here on um, my block, and I know me, that will transfer. So I'm just gonna tidy that up, and I'm lining this up with that V that you see right here in the floral. So it's kind of acting like my visual cue to where I'm going to position the sentiment and I'm really digging the way that looks. Okay, so I've got this piece of craft twine that I'm just making two little bunny ear loops and just kind of pulling it through to create a really sweet and simple bow that I'm going to put at the top of the embroidery hoop. And it's just a really low profile, easy way to add an embellishment to this embroidery hoop look and kind of finish off that embroidery hoop art look. And all I've got here is a little piece, little dot of Gina K Connect glue, and I'm just taking the tip of my scissors and putting it down here just to kind of hold it down a little bit to let it adhere. And I'm just loving how that's finished off. It just looks so 
Nice. I just love it. Okay, so I've grabbed some Nouveau drops in this yellow, and I always just kind of dump a little bit of those Nouveau drops on my hand just to kind of get them started. And I'm just adding a little bit of dot texture with these dimensional drops in the center of these florals. Now this yellow color is just pulling together the fall look that we have going with the tomato soup and the prickly pear and even the passionate pink. You can take pink and make it work for fall or any season by just having the complementary colors of the other fall inks with it. So it does have this fall look in its color palette and these little yellow dots help finish it off. And I'm really, really digging this background. Here's the original um, inspiration on the right, but I am loving how we've got all this texture and dimension. And I really didn't add a lot of weight to the card. I just love that. And that stamp kissing technique is just brilliant. I love it. So here's a final look at the card. I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial. Thanks so much for joining me. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.